Hey everyone, it's Lauren here. I'm so excited to pop in today to share with you a layout I've created with highlighting my gorgeous little girl and some of her wonderful facial expressions. I'm using all the beautiful Pink Fresh Studio goodies from the new collection Days of Splendor and I'm stepping outside my comfort zone here a little because I've recently purchased a stamping platform which it's really exciting for me because I, I've not used a stamping platform before, but I'm um, seeing lots of beautiful cards made by the Pink Fresh Studio card design team. I was really inspired to start using my stamp sets more and do, making some beautiful cards. And I thought I would also incorporate this into my scrapbooking as well. So you'll see me doing something like that. So I've just started out with a white page here and I've put some gesso on it because you know me, I always love a bit of mixed media. And I've also grabbed out this pattern piece, this beautiful stripe, which highlights most of the colors in the Days of Splendor collection. And I'm just going to create a border using those that, that stripy piece down each side of my white cardstock there. So here I am having a bit of a go at the days of, oh sorry, the stamping platform and look how, look how professional I look here. <laughs> Clearly I'm not but I'm just having fun and I'd already pre-cut some of this same stamp that you see me but I wanted to create another so that you knew how I did it on the platform as well. So I'm using a trio of stamps, these gorgeous little um Ink Cubes are by Pink Fresh Studio and they come in a huge variety of colours. So as you can see that was really simple to do by using the platform. I didn't have to realign my stamp. I, it, it was already in position which allowed me to make that that sort of um, ombre effect with my stamps there just by inking the top or the bottom of the stamp and just folding it back over and the stamp is in the correct spot. So this great stamp here, um, it's an alphabet stamp. It's also by Pink Fresh Studio and I believe it is called the Adore stamp set. You can also get the coordinating dies that go with it as well if you don't want to fussy cut. Like I, I love fussy cutting so I don't mind sitting there and fussy cutting but you can get the coordinating dies so you can put them through your um, Sizzix or your Cuddlebug or whatever you have for your dies. Um, to cut them out. So there you go. As you can see, I've just trimmed a little bit off the um, white cardstock, which gave me the size border I wanted on each side. Um, I I like the idea of bordering a stripe on each side because although um, it's there's a big white space in the middle, it gives a sense of carrying carrying the the page through. So I like the light blue up the top, so I went with that and. Um, fiddled it around and I just hoped then that um, my page was going to be 12 by 12 inch that was just luck and I thought I'd just better double check that now <laughs> so I think I need a little bit of a trim off the side just to make sure it fits into my album and um, and there you have it so there's sort of my foundation page and I've gessoed that with clear gesso and now I'm going to start playing with my mixed media and um, I'm, I'm not going to do too much of that um, because I've got four photos and they're going to cover a lot of the page. But you know me, I just like to have a little bit peeking out the sides there. I've also just added a little bit of stitching down the sides just to make it look as though um, it was meant to be there and not as though I just stuck the white page onto the stripe page. It just sort of helped that that transition between the patterned and the white cardstock there and gave it that little bit of extra detail which I thought was lovely. So these photos here, this was really a fun little project for me to sort of step outside my comfort zone. Usually I layer, well, I mount my photos, you know, maybe two or three times to really get the photo to pop off the page and sort of stand out amongst all the mixed media and the embellishments that I normally do. But I had the luxury with these photos, predominantly because they were full frame photos, like all you can see is Katie's head and it was on a white backdrop. 
So you've got a nice plain backdrop with not too many competing things, which allowed me to not have to mount the photos because I knew that that cluster of four photos, um, especially when I've adhered them into sort of one cluster, was going to be able to sort of do the job and still remain standing out and um, my embellishment work won't um, take away from the photos you'll be able to still be able to look at my layout and the photos still be highlighted there so I'm just using a as you saw I just got one of the ink cubes I stamped it onto my stamping platform and I've just activated that with water which allows me to use it as sort of a liquid watercolor as such um, the beautiful thing about this color is when it dried it showed the varying different colors in the pigment there so you'll see a little bit of a, a change in color which is really lovely so I can actually play around with how much pigment goes in a certain spot and I can apply more and it can get darker and as you can see here I've just picked up I think that one's called Ocean Breeze and I'm just adding a little bit of a layer of that in as well just to give it a bit of a contrast and as you can see it's sort of starting to look really dreamy and pretty and and soft but just not too much well some people who don't do mixed media they're probably thinking that's a lot <laughs> but it's not much compared to my usual layouts maybe I should say that so yes so here I am just drying off as you notice when I'm drying off the pigment kind of pushes to the edges of where I was painting which gives that darker edge around some parts and also gives that lighter edge the other beautiful thing about drying off in between your layers is that your pigment will layer to a certain extent layer up and sit on top of the color that you'd previously put on before so as you can see they're not blending too much if I did push the color and add added more water and reactivated the colors behind it it would start to blend but just because I'm putting that light layer on top and I'm moving it around quite quickly and then drying it off dapping off those excess pools I knew that I, I, I wouldn't have that problem it gave me that ability to sort of layer up and as you can see it's not too much it's just sort of subtly peeking out from behind the photo and shortly you'll see when I add my embellishments that that mixed media work will sort of just sink into the background and just form part of the foundation of of my layout there and not uh, not overtake the layout so I thought I'd mount the photo um, this is just um, a large roll of it's it's designed this foam mounting tape is designed to put picture frames on the wall it is acid free and I just picked it up from my local hardware store which is Bunnings in my area and it's really thin so it doesn't lift it off too much it can get a bit fiddly but um, it certainly is a um, it's a nice way just to get that little bit of depth so have when you when you're buying your foam tape you probably can go into your craft store and you can have a look at them they may not say it on the packet but you can you know turn it to the side and have a look at the varying depth of foam and sometimes it's nice to pick up a really thin one just to add a little bit of dimension and other times it's nice to pick up one that's got a whole lot of puffiness to really you know make those embellishments sort of like jump off the page there so here I am you've seen me with my trio of love 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 in those colors um, and I tried to I'm now just bringing in those embellishments I'm thinking about um, the colors and where they're sort of sitting next to the corresponding love title and what what colors pick up a little bit different from you know to sort of just to sort of bring it all together and not make it look like um, the titles are very different to the embellishments so I've managed to do that by trying my best to get colors that will match as close as possible um, but also I've helped that out by trying to make sure my embellish my floral embellishments are sort of matching my my love title there as well so I'm just using some liquid glue to adhere that down some I'm adhering on the photo some I'm hearing behind the photo that's helping with that dimension and that depth I'm not puffing them up or anything like that because I can see that just this layout coming together 
those photos are really standing out and it doesn't need too much more work to try and bring this layout together and make it look really pretty there adding some little puffy squares there I've got there they're quite they're a little bit higher so once again I'm just changing my level my depth of puffiness to um, create more dimension in my layout but obviously I'm also mindful that I'm not going to uh, maybe triple layout, triple layer any um, any foam because it does need to go into an album eventually as well. So using some foam tape on this set of love just to help that um, those photos. You'll see in some of the love ones that I do, I might put a bit of foam on some, but not on the others, and I use a liquid glue. That's just to help um, it transition from the photo onto the background, um, and I'm just layering them up, just sort of making them a little bit higgledy piggledy um, on my titles so because I always do this with my titles I don't want them to be perfect because I never can get things perfect so if my title is super straight and I haven't used a ruler or something along those lines it's not going to work whereas I think if I intentionally look make it look a little bit off center and make them up and down and you know lean them to the side well if I intentionally do that it sort of makes it look like well she was meant to do that not <laughs> it doesn't need to be perfect um, so I'm also very careful here I'm trying not to um, get too much over the couple of faces there that that love seems to be blocking so I'm sort of squishing them in nice and tight um, trying to make sure I can capture the full facial expressions of my little girl and not lose her in all that title there and um, and going from there the other thing that I've done with this layout I've put the two photos where she's really expressive and looking straight into the camera as the main two top and bottom there which sort of draw your eye when you're looking at the layout it draws your eye to those two first and then you might look at the other two little facial expressions as a secondary thing so just being mindful about if you're doing a layout like this where you've sort of set up a little um you know snippet of different facial expressions to just keep in mind where you're positioning the different ones um so if I had the two where she's really looking into the camera and really her eyes are really big at the top then you would be drawn to that and maybe not look down at the bottom two but by sort of mixing them up diagonally top and bottom you're sort of drawn to the to the entirety but your eyes are drawn to those full facial expressions um, where she's looking first so I just wanted to pretty it up a little bit more and bring it to life so I've cut some of the um, beautiful little pink fresh studio butterfly cut file butterflies out these are super thin and delicate and because I haven't backed them it gives that ability to be a little bit translucent on the page as well and just sort of to really pretty pretty it up I've just come in with some cardstock stickers this is the final part where I'm using some embellishments I've also grabbed some of the puffy stickers and I've applied a couple of little puffy stickers on there just to finish it off so there's my layout I hope you like it I hope it's inspired you to have a little photo shoot and just remembering those different facial expressions and positioning them on the page and I hope you like my first attempt at using a platform in my scrapbooking all right guys if you haven't heard of Pink Fresh Studio the, dis the link is in the description below I encourage you to check them out all right guys take care happy scrapping bye